Hello everybody and welcome back to Spore, but not the usual Spore. Today I'm going to be making a tier list, the first one that we've done on the channel. And by we, I mean currently just uh, me, I'm alone. But I wanted to do something a little bit different today. Because I didn't really feel like playing the actual game at the moment. I know, a travesty. But I did want to do something Spore related, so we're going to be doing this. These are the archetypes, or as they're called, I believe, in-game philosophies of space stage empires within Spore. Today we're going to be talking about the least nuanced take of them, which means I'm comparing their abilities specifically, because each one of these has a unique activatable ability with the exception of Wanderer, which we will get to, uh, that has a cooldown, etc., and we're going to rate those powers specifically. Now, the nuance take, which I will possibly talk about in a future video, is comparing the path to each of these, right? So, of note, we have the shaman and the warrior, and the trader, I believe. Or is it scientist? Whatever. It's irrelevant for this video, but the shaman and warrior are both all of a specific color of card, right? If you go all green cards, if you start as an herbivore, you move up to being friendly and then religious. Uh, when you go into space stage, you will be a shaman. Warrior is the opposite. If you go super aggro and kill everybody, you become a warrior. So the combination of cards that you can get directly impact how effective each of these are in a way, right? Because if you are aggressive in, I believe, cell stage, if you're a carnivore, um, on the warrior path, you get extra HP for your ship, right? Now that's pretty useful for a warrior, but it's also useful for a zealot or a knight, if you're playing to your archetype, of course. So we're not going to talk about all that today, because that's a lot. I'd have to do a bit more research, and I'd have to think about it some more, and maybe just play some more games. So today we're going to focus on what's in front of us, which is their individual abilities. We'll start with Bard. Now, Bards have the Soothing Song ability, which basically boosts relations with a species. I believe what it does is it sets the relationship to fully neutral, okay? Which means that you can then start being friends with them from a starting point of zero as opposed to a starting point of, like, negative something, perhaps. Unfortunately, this does not work on the Grox, right? So if you haven't played Bard and you were maybe thinking about doing that, it don't work, I'm sorry. For that reason, I do not think that the Soothing Song ability is all that good. It is situationally fine in that if you meet somebody that's really angry at you, you can get them to be friendly, so you don't have to deal with as many declarations of war or demands of tribute and stuff like that, maybe. It's still just not very good to me, so I would put it in C tier. That's that's where I would set the bard special ability. It's not the worst, but it's not very good either. And speaking of the worst... <laughs> This may not be the absolute most garbage tier ability, but I think it sucks. Diplomats get Static Cling. When you activate it, it immobilizes all enemy ships and turrets on the planet. It's okay against the Grox, which is, I think, the only thing that keeps it in C tier. That's it. Other than that, in, in battle, there's just so many better options. It's just not good. The, the reason why I put it in the same tier as Bard is literally only because I'm pretty sure Static Cling does work on the Groks. Being able to disable all of the Grok stuff, I mean, it's pretty good. That's not too bad, right? If you are allying with them or, you know, going to war with them, either way, it's going to be a shitty time being able to disable them might help you out. So, I don't have much else to say about Diplomat. I remember I got Diplomat one time, back in the olden days when I was playing this game even more, and I did not like it. I just kind of stopped playing because of it. Uh, I came back to that game eventually, but I was very disappointed. Let me just put it like that. Next up is Ecologist. This is a very niche one, 
and I'm going to be leaving it in B tier, but it's, it is niche. It gets Safari Vacuum, which abducts two members of every species on the planet instantly. This is really helpful if you're big into terraforming. It's really helpful if you are wanting to stabilize a lot of planets and spread your empire in a more peaceful way without engaging with other empires too much. It can be really fun uh, to just suck up a bunch of species and just have them on hand. It's pretty cool. It doesn't really, it doesn't really help you win the game directly. It doesn't really have a win condition. It doesn't really have an end game. It just kind of is what it is. And that's completely fine. It's very good as a B tier. As somebody who loves terraforming and colonizing planets and stuff, big fan of that, this is a really good ability in my eyes. But it is not very powerful. It doesn't get to A tier. Now the knight. The knight gets the summon mini U ability, which is kind of a mixed bag, but... I am going to be bold, and I'm going to say it's an A-tier ability. Now, the knight as an archetype is interesting anyway, because, notably, the knight is not an archetype that exists naturally in the galaxy. So every AI, civilization, empire, whatever you want to call it, has its own philosophy, its own archetype, except knights. They do not exist. So if you start the game in the space stage... We'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but if you start the game in Space Stage, there's no way for you to naturally become a knight, as far as I am aware. But talking about their ability specifically here, Summon Mini U summons a small clone of your spaceship. It, uh, it acts just like an allied spaceship. It's pretty good. is a good distraction against the Groks. It's a good distraction against pirates. How long does it last? I actually don't remember that. Uh, does it say here? I'm going to look this up real quick for you guys so that I can give you that information. The duration is equal to the cooldown. Oh, okay. There you go. Finally got to the actual answer. There, there we are. So, you can have the mini U all the time, is basically the point here, which is pretty good. Again, helpful against the Groks, helpful against space pirates. Even if you are playing a very pacifist run, having to deal with things like space pirates is something you're going to have to be concerned about. If somebody attacks you, you're going to have to defend yourself to some extent. It's it's just more flexible, especially considering it's always there. I was a little bit iffy about putting it in A tier, but knowing that it is always there, that really sells it for me, frankly. I think that that's really powerful. Now, next up is Scientist. Scientist is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> they get Gravitation Wave, which just destroys every city and tribe on the planet. It is notable, using this ability, unlike the other ones so far, breaches Galactic Code and gives you a negative relationship penalty. Uh, it's minus 30? Yeah, minus 30. It has like a range, but 10 parsecs is pretty far, so, you know, maybe that, maybe just assume it's going to be everybody that's your neighbor. However, that being said, even with all of that anginess that can come along, it's still pretty good. I would say it is the highest A tier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bold and say that. I think Knight kind of hovers between these two. Like, you could make an argument that Knight is only B tier. But Scientist is very clearly A tier. It's almost S tier. I will explain why later. Uh, why it does not get into S tier, that is. Now, Shaman. This, this is definitely going to be a controversial one. I actually think Shaman is low S tier. It's not nearly as powerful as Scientist. Okay, but it gets the return ticket ability, which is one of those things that's just really nice. It allows you to teleport home from anywhere, anywhere in the entire galaxy. This is fantastic when you are trying to get through the Grok's barricade to get to the center of the galaxy, or just when you're trying to hang out near the Grok's literally ever. Uh, or if you just get attacked by something and it starts fucking you up and you didn't expect it to. 
any of those things, return ticket just takes you home. You can heal up, hang out, collect some spice, whatever. It's really good. It is less flashy than the scientist ability. It's less powerful in many ways, but the convenience of it is just so strong. It's just so good. Next up is the trader. Now, trader is a little bit interesting. Trader gets cash, 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 cash infusion. Sorry, which just instantly fills the monetary like takeover meter for the solar system you're in. You still have to buy the system directly, though, which is what sort of makes this a bit iffy. Now, I think I'm going to be generous. And I'm going to put Trader in S tier, but it's the very bottom of S tier. It saves you time, but it doesn't really save you money all that much. Because, obviously, in Space Stage, you establish trade routes. Trade routes fill up that bar. When the bar is full, that is when you can go in and buy the system. So the buying part, you still have to do on your own. But saving that time could be kind of helpful, especially early game. I think you get a lot of value out of this, but it just falls off so hard. I say it's better than the scientist because it's less aggro, even though it's less powerful as well. Um, it is the culmination of a pure middle of the road kind of build where you like go omnivore, where you go adaptable, where you go... I don't remember what tribal stage is called, but you just go each of those and then you end with the economic and civilization. If you're into playing that style, it's very solid. Otherwise, it's fine, but it's just not, it's not that powerful. You could, like, if you were to go scientist and you were a more aggressive species, you'd get way more value out of this, obviously. So... Next up, we have Wanderer. Wanderer is interesting in that it's very boring. When you start the game in Space Stage, you obviously do not get to start with a philosophy because you didn't play the previous stages that determined your philosophy. Wanderer, therefore, gives nothing. It used to give a thing called the Species Shuffler, sorry, which just literally swaps every creature and plant with another random one. But now it in the game as it currently is, it doesn't do nothing. Uh, no NPC can be a wanderer. It's purely for the player. So, because of all that, I mean, it doesn't even have an ability. It's an obvious D tier, clearly. The only real advantage of it is, uh, I don't think anybody has any strong feelings towards you based off of being a wanderer. I could be wrong about that, but... I'm fairly certain. So, we'll leave it in D tier, but it, it is worth noting nobody's going to hate you for being a wanderer. Except the Groks, but they hate everyone. Next up is Warrior. Uh, a Warrior's ability is, and this is definitely going to be one that I think upsets some people. I think it's the worst ability in the game. I think actually I prefer the Diplomat ability over the Warrior. So Warrior, it's called Raider Rally. All it does is it opens a pirate portal on the planet that you're on. That's it. It's like having a bunch of shitty versions of the mini you around that do absolutely nothing. I, They don't distract the Groks worth anything. They, It's just not good. Now, to be clear, you can still get value out of it. All right, If you end up playing as a warrior, you're not going to be like, Oh man, I just am never going to use my ability. Yeah, it's worth having sometimes. You Pop it open when you're invading a planet, and it'll distract the enemy a little bit. And that can be helpful, but it's just, it doesn't scale very well, I think is the issue. It, if you fight powerful empires, or you fight the Groks or something, you're just going to have a bit of a bad time, in my opinion. So, the warrior, kind of meh, overall. The final one. The zealot. This is not going to be a controversial take, but the Zealot is the most powerful ability in the entire game. It's called Fanatical Frenzy. What it does is that when you use it, it converts the system to your empire. Straight up. It's just yours now. There's no 
caveats. There's no monkey's paw here. It's all, it's just straight up, you get a free system. System, to be clear. System. That's pretty good. The Zealot, overall, is the most powerful. I also, it's one of the more flexible uh, outcomes that you can get, too, because it's, you get there by having an even number of red and green cards. Or, I believe, two of one and one of the other. Now, we're not really taking that into account here. I just think it's worth noting. The Zealot ability is so powerful. Fanatical Frenzy is so powerful. It really cannot be compared to any of these other ones. It's it's honestly a bit unfair that I'm even comparing Zealot to like these other cards. I really should have put in a lower uh, category and made or made like an S plus tier to put Zealot in, but I didn't. This is what it looks like roughly. Uh, I think it's a pretty fine distribution. C tier stuff is weak but usable. You're not going to regret using it. And if you play towards the Bard's power... Honestly, you could argue Bard should be in B. But if you play towards the Bard's ability, if you play towards the Warrior ability, you'll get plenty of use out of it. You're not going to be that sad. It's just that the Zealot does the thing better, you know? Like, even for a Conqueror race, being able to just convert the entire system is so good. Now, you might be thinking... The cooldowns kind of nerf this effect, right? The issue is that it doesn't, unless you choose to allow yourself to be shackled, okay? Because the simple fact is, all of these ability cooldowns can be reset by simply logging out of the game and then logging back in. It sets the cooldown back to nothing, and... That makes Fanatical Frenzy too good, frankly. Like, Return Ticket being spammable, that doesn't really matter. Your home plan is probably really far away from whatever you were running away from. You're not going to need to return Ticket twice in a row like that, you know? Trader, maybe you'll want to, uh, to, like, boost two plan like, two systems at once. That could be a thing, sure. But you'd still have to buy them, so you'd still be out that money, right? Scientist, kind of the same thing. Yeah, you could use it to wipe multiple planets. That's absolutely true. But, like, why would you want to? If you use the Zealot ability, you never lose a city. Ever. You just convert the planet and you get the cities. And then you can go in and edit them as you want. It's like the Zealot has all the bonuses of the trader who buys the planets and gets to keep them as is, right? But with the added benefit of the scientist, which is neutralizing a planet, but with none of the negatives. And unlike the diplomat, or the scientist, or the trader, like, there's no downsides to it. There's no catch. The only technical downside is that you breach the galactic code. But anything that declares war on you, you can just spam... Hello? Sorry. My uh, my headphones turned off randomly there. Um, yeah, you can just spam logouts and be good. You just conquer their whole empire in like, I don't know, 10 logouts. And be good. It'd be good to go. It's just not really fair to compare it to the other abilities, which are each good in their own ways. Like I said, I really like the Shaman Return Ticket. I think that it's 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 very useful. It's very fun. But... What are you going to do? There's just one overarching shadow that looms over every other philosophy, and it is the Zealot. Uh, I have used it in the past. It was my favorite um, save file for a long time. It was before I realized how overpowered the Zealot ability was. I never abused the logout mechanic. I just occasionally conquered a planet for free, or a system for free. And I thought, oh, everyone else's abilities are probably just as good. They aren't. I w that was just wrong. That was a dumb thing that I thought as a child. And now I know better. But that uh, that's all of it. There's no other philosophies in the game. Um, at some point, we will discuss the philosophies within the context of the path to get to them. Which ones get the most out of kind of their optimal pathway, right? And 
that should be fun. It will be a bit more difficult of a tier list to make. This is pretty simple. There's a few that I think are kind of questionable, like some people would probably put Trader down in A or maybe even in only in B tier. Knight would probably be lower on some people's lists. I think Warrior would probably be a bit higher on other people's lists, but I think that this is pretty good. If I were to change anything, it would probably be The Ecologist. Because I can understand people thinking its ability is bland and generally worse than these three, but I find it so useful. So I don't know when that more nuanced video is going to come out. I need to read up quite a bit on the pathways and stuff like that, so I, I feel like I have a good understanding of what the Spore community throughout the years has kind of thought versus what my own experience has told me. Um, but, you know, maybe in a week or so. Either way, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the Spore content, and I will put out more. Don't you worry. Uh, there will probably be, I don't know, Saturday? I probably shouldn't make promises like that. You know what? Here in the next couple days after this video releases, I'll put out another episode of Spore. That's actual gameplay. And, hey, if you guys like this tier list stuff, definitely let me know in the comic comments. Comics? What the? in the comments because I am absolutely down to make more of this kind of content for you guys. So this has been Zach. I'll catch you next time.